everyone. Now, I've got another video on beepers here, but this one's a little bit different. Um, you may be familiar with these things that uh, you get at cafes and takeaways uh, to let you know when your food's ready. So you order your food, they give you one of these, and you go off to wherever you are. And when your food's ready, they'll make this beep, and you can go pick up your food. Well, you don't normally take this home, by the way, but I just borrowed this. Anyway, um, I wanted to transmit the signal myself using GNU Radio and a Hack RF, which I did. So I can make that beep like that. So in this video, I'm going to go through how I did all this and ended up making the, um, my own little beeper. So I'll go through that. So you can see on the model here, it's 433 meg. Yeah, I've got it from YouTube. Oh, it's on YouTube. Hey? You're going to be on YouTube if I do that. No, no, no. So, no, I don't want that. From eBay. Yeah. So, yeah, looking at the frequency, it's on 433, which is a common one anyway. So um, I'm just waiting for number 16 to go. So I've got number 16 here. So I'll get that signal when it comes in, um, just through the uh, RTL SDR dongle here. And this is for transmitting, which I'll look at another time. But for now, I'm just going to capture the uh, signal. I just looked up that model number to get a picture of it. So that's what it looks like from their side that I don't see. Um, but she just said it was something cheap they got off eBay. And look, it does the job. So that's the unit there. All right, so here's GQRX. And um, as you can see, I've got the IQ recording the samples here. And in a second, she presses the button. There it is. So you can see it's, it's heaps strong. So I recorded that and then, of course, stopped my recording. And that was all I needed from that one there. Now, one recording by itself wouldn't have been enough for me to decode this to be a generic uh, system. I would have been able to do a replay for that particular number, but I wanted better than that. So what I did uh, before she was aware of what I was up to is um, I just had a look at some other numbers that other people were waiting um, had there. So, you know, I had a bit of a look, saw it was number seven there, number eight there. And I just did the same thing, captured the IQ samples. And when I saw theirs beep, I went, ah, that was number seven. So I saved that. So I'll show you what I've, I've saved previously. Okay, so here's one of the recordings for the number seven one. And you can see it's three gig. Now it racks up uh, disk space pretty quickly because there's a lot of data coming in there. But um, I'll show you how I can trim that down as well. So what I do now is open that up in, in Spectrum and just have a look-see. So here it is here. That's the, uh, the signal that I captured. And somewhere along the way there, it'll be right towards the end because I stopped it as soon as I captured it. So there's the signal. You can see it repeats a few times. So that's there. And what I, what I do now, before I do anything over here really, is I just export those samples. And what you do is just leave it on current view. So whatever's on the screen, and I'll call that uh, trimmed number seven dot raw. Just call it raw. So now, instead of that, I'll open up um, trimmed number seven raw. So it makes it a lot easier. The file size would be way smaller. So what I do here now is just adjust the power minimax till I get something reasonable to look at, like that. So now I've got to figure out the timing of all that. There's the pulses, but I don't know what's what yet. So the first thing I want to do is figure out the time. So the sample rate here is the same sample rate that I used. And what that does is set the timing scales up appropriately. So now I just enable the cursor and start it at the start. So the first pulse there until the next one. And add a few more, add a lot more. So it was 32-ish or whatever before the next one. And you can see what I'm doing here is I'm lining up each line to the start of the symbol there. So the more you've got, the accurate you can be. And it turns out to be about there. Okay, so this now gives you some sample rates and sample period. So let's say 1.3 milliseconds between, between each uh, symbol. So I did a video in the past on a doorbell, a wireless doorbell, where I did most of the coding in GNU Radio. So all I really did was modify that for this. So knowing that symbol period and knowing that there's like six blank symbols worth at the end, um, I just modified my doorbell one. So I'll show you that. All right, so here's the flow chart in GNU Radio. I'm not going to go through this in depth because I already did that on that doorbell video. So I'll put a link in if you want to check that out. Um, but here's my new modified one. But before I actually get into this, I'll show you how I decoded the different uh, numbers. So I'll show you the, uh, the other couple of captures that I did. Okay, so here's some from number seven, eight, and 12. And this one over here is 16, which is a little different. But anyway, what you can see is most of it is the same. If you can see that 
pretty clearly. It's mostly the same up until about here. Now, look at it, number 7. What's binary for 7? It's 111. So there's 7. Now, binary for 8 is 0001 if you're coming from the right, or 0001 this way if you're coming from the left, if that made any sense. So this showed me that that would be bit 1, 2, and 4, which together adds up to 7. And this one down here, when they're unset, I'm calling the short pulses a 0. If they're unset, the next one's 1, that's, that's number 8. And again, with 12, that's 8 and 4. So that seems to be the pattern there. It threw me a bit with uh, number 16, though, because that doesn't seem to follow that. I just thought the next one would be 16, you know, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. But for number 16, it was way up here. So uh, must be a couple of little bits doing nothing in the middle. So that was, uh, that was that. Anyway, so that tells me which bits I've got to modify to um, activate the different, the different numbers. So using uh, the bits for number 16, because that's what I've got here, I'll make the flowchart in GNU Radio. Right, so here it is. There's my vector source. But just before I get into that, one of the variables I used was the symbol period. And I set this um, flow graph up so that I use that variable as it appears on in Spectrum. So in, in Spectrum here, I've got symbol period 1.3. I made it so I can just put that number in here. And that that is for all this stuff up here, which I'm not going to go into now, but it works on, on that variable there. So anyway, the vector source is um, that stuff at the start, which you saw, let me just bring one of them up. Oh, I need one, I'll piss all them off. Okay, so there are the pulses for number 16. So you can see a short pulse, I've just made a zero and then a one for the rest. And what I've done, I've gone up to that point that where it's all the same, and then a variable for the order. And, the ver oh, and I've got this variable for order 16, which is just this plus this. I could have just done that in one long list there, but um, that was the first four bits for the other method from the number 7, 8, and 12 and that. And um, as this was a bit different, I just separated them with a plus just to make it easier to read. But altogether, that's, that adds up to a, um, a big pulse train. So if I run that, okay, there's the flow chart. And I'll just stop it running here. Uh, that's the pulse train that, that I made. And I've still got these duty cycle uh, sliders here if I want to change the width of these, but it wasn't too fussy. So that works with an 80-20 duty cycle. So that is the pulse representation of, of this here with the correct timing and everything. So all I had to do then was feed it to the um, transmitter. So if I go back here, that's what you were looking at here. And I just feed that into the, um, the HackRF to transmit, which is this thing here. And I activate it by pressing a push button. So the push button is here, this button. So when I press that, and when I let go of pressing apparently, Press and let go. That sets it off. So what I obviously can do now, I should be able to do, is just change that variable for the different unit number and um, set them off. So that's that. There's no real reason I did this, just for the hell of it, really. All right, so that's that. Just a bit of fun there. And um, look, I know how the comments are going to go. There'll be people saying, you could just use this or this device or this flipper. Have you seen that? That's all good and well, but... What I wanted to do was build my own system using GNU Radio, and I'm still not the master of that thing, but th the thing about doing it that way is you can then modify things to make your own system, and that's, that's ultimately what I'm doing. Rather than just copying stuff or replaying or doing something simple, I wanted to actually synthesize it completely and build it. So anyway, that's that, and that's all for now. So till next time, you know what to do. See ya.